I'm very delighted to be here this morning to be present at the opening of your Divisional Youth and Sports Conference for the Eastern Division. It's always a pleasure to be among youth representatives and those who work with youth as we together walk the talk to mold the leaders of and for our future. It is, a, it is a relay as one generation contributes to the development of the lake. As you gather today as peers as well as beneficiaries, we hope that you will help us establish a new direction for the ministry. We really want to look not just, this today, not just that today, but at tomorrow, and of course the longer term future. Throughout government and the civil service, we are committed to providing to our clients and to the Fijian public as a whole an efficient, effective, and economic means of serving the public. We need to be guided by the needs of the country as we, as a nation, work collectively to meet training requirements to give further impetus to economic growth in Fiji. We need your input as a young people we need assistance to become economically active and, in some instances, more economically active. We need the input of the private sector to identify needs so that businesses can grow and more young people with the requisite skills are able to compete for attractive jobs and that is an area that my ministry looks after. We need to guide training institutions involved in formal, informal, and non-formal education sectors to provide training to meet the skills required for our economy. We need to ensure we're able to absorb people into the formal and informal sector, that people in a position to save and create wealth, and therefore to help our economy expand. This conference today, as you might know, is held simultaneously across all four divisions in Fiji. And of course it holds special importance as it is being held at a time of significant growth and progress in the country. This conference hold, provides a forum for intensive dialogue for you, all of you youth, to guide us as we start our planning for the 2017 and the 2018 financial year, as well as for the three financial years after that. We really want you to give us your honest advice on what you need us to do to help you. Our political leadership talks about a leg up, and, that, and this is what we are about. This is your opportunity, so please take it with both hands. In doing so, please polish your crystal balls to try and predict where we need to be as a country in 10 years time, and what we need to do in the area of youth development to get there. As ministries, we will need to do the work to formulate the plans of how to get there. You just need to tell us what we need to do, and why so, so that we know what are the expected outcomes. This is a cooperative approach across all ministries and the training sector. It has to be in order for us to succeed. Please look at the challenges in Fiji today. You need to find creative and futuristic solutions. Presently, the Ministry, the Ministry of Youth is very focused on different trainings, and this includes agriculture and carpentry, training for women, training in small boat engine repair, as well as project management, financial literacy in empowerment training, training in music, and training at the village level, and at the ministry's five youth training centers. Now, as we remember our mandate to help people between the ages of 15 and 25 who are not in formal education, training, or employment to get into economic activity, maybe uh, what we should be looking at is plumbers and electricians and tilers, general maintenance for the hotel industry, introduction to computers, developing websites, improving dairy and other forms of farming. And I'm sure you can yourselves add to this list. 
some questions that you may need to consider as you formulate how you can contribute to the broader framework of uh, youth in Fiji. We have a rural to urban drift. So how can we as a youth group provide more or better opportunities for those of our fellow Fijians in rural areas? How can we make agriculture sexy because it is critical to food security and a real means of generating wealth? How do we transform ourselves as a group from subsistence to commercial or entrepreneurial approach generally? How do we address the contradiction of needing to cut down trees so we have more farmland while we also need to balance the other, the other part of it which is reducing our carbon footprint by planting more trees? How do we address resilience in the face of climate change? and our vulnerability to natural disasters. How do we use this training opportunity to break down gender stereotypes? Though our country is faced with many challenges, it also has the advantage of many opportunities to achieve common objectives that we pursue as a group and that transforms Fiji into a country that we can all be even more proud of. To transform these opportunities into a positive reality requires all of us, younger and older Fijians, to act together to realize the goal of a better life for all. This is why this conference is critically important. And you yourself should know that your role here is even more important because of these challenges and opportunities. Hopefully by the time you conclude your meetings, you will have agreed on the steps we will take together to contribute to nation and economy building, whether by creating positive change or by being resilient and fostering enthusiasm for the greater good. To do this, you will have to provide a safe space for an honest and open assessment of the major elements that characterize our society, encompassing both the positives and the negatives. Therefore, all of us, government institutions, national associations, and stakeholders, we must take the opportunity and the responsibility to contribute to development and nation building with greater inclusion and coordinated action. During the 2015 National Youth and Sports Conference, the views of young Fijians were captured in the Lodola Youth Declaration. This declaration affirmed the commitments made under the 2014 Baku Commitment to Youth Policies and the World Programme of Action 2010 and beyond. It is also built on the 2014 Suva Declaration on Youth. There is a significant contribution that young people can and should make towards national development. We have these declarations in place. Now we need to move to greater coordination to provide services and training required to achieve greater prosperity. However, it is not only youth development that occupies us. We need to reinforce the importance of physical activity and sports in our lives. I say physical activity because this can include gardening, cleaning your house, or traditional dancing. It is not just about competition. According to the requirements published by the Surgeons General around the world, we all should be physically active for at least 45 minutes a day. Put your hands up if you do that. No, one, one honest person. <laughs> so, so active that it is strenuous and raises our heartbeat. In order to promote better health across Fiji, we also need to reassess our diet and reduce our helpings. Eat more fruit, fruits and vegetables, less salt and deep fried food, and dare I say, less carbon and alcohol. I know you're probably thinking that it will take the fun out of life as youth, but Realistically speaking, life is getting shorter as we are not looking after ourselves properly. As a result, we are not able to fully contribute to our economy and society. So please think about, uh, so please think very carefully and make this commitment to be physically active and be an agent of change. I'd also like to emphasize another aspect of change that we should no longer accept as normal, poor service that we receive. This is in particular reference to the civil service. 
As, as speaking as a permanent secretary, we are committed to improving service levels and service delivery. We want to know when we are failing in these duties so that we can improve. We want to set a new standard for others in Fiji to follow. We want to implement what Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see and lead by example. Finally, I, I take this opportunity to also thank UNICEF for their valuable contribution to these divisional conferences. You are stakeholders and those who have worked tirelessly to bring this conference together. Please, can we give them a round of applause? I also thank the speakers who will be engaged in thought-provoking sessions throughout this program. As I said earlier, please take this opportunity to help us develop your new agenda. In the words of Nelson Mandela, be the scriptwriters of your destiny and feature yourselves as stars that showed the way towards a brighter future. With those few words of encouragement, Thank you.